Welcome back guys, what a beautiful day to upload more Odyssey content on this beautiful weekend. Today I will show you the easiest 100% crit build you can make in this game. You will easily get 2.7 million damage with an overpower attack, you will get over 1 million damage with your arrows and with your assassinations and you will only need 79 ability points instead of 400 and you will also only need 200,000 drachme instead of 1 million. Even those mystical creatures will be no problem even on nightmare you just have to do one or two overpower attacks and then their history nothing easier than that. I also used that build during my restart playthrough and it was so overpowered once we reach 100% crit with that build, it was a total breeze to play with it. This build will have up to 100% crit chance and up to 365% critical damage. You don't have to grind for ability points, you don't have to grind for money or for any loot, we just use the best items possible which are easily to get or just items from the shop to achieve that super cool build. But now let's first check out the damage values. We will get 170,000 with the light attack and 250,000 with the heavy attack when we attack from behind. The charged heavy attack will be 3 times that with 760,000, fury will be shy to 1 million and the overpower will be around 2.6 million damage. Your assassinations will be easily able to kill every normal enemy, rush assassination anyway and rush assassination will also be able to kill mercenaries during night time. Because at night you will get the additional 10% damage from stealth master and if you attempt that during daytime they might have a little bit health left but you can of course use an overpower attack at any time to get rid of them or simply use one of your powerful arrows for example the devastating shot that will be most of the time enough to kill every mercenary with a single shot dealing over 950,000 damage easily. But before we go to the inventory, special thanks to my super fans Sir Squaddy Jacob, Augustine and Grateful Golem, thank you very much for your incredible support. If you also want some build advice, wallpapers, private chat rooms on our discord server and more, then check out the youtube or patreon membership, hit the join button and join our community. Here in the inventory we have 36,000 warrior damage, 112,000 assassin damage and of course we use the big combo to get that crazy amount of warrior damage otherwise we would only have the 20,000 like from the other sword. So the big combo is giving us the additional 15,000 warrior damage here. And of course we will also use our warrior damage when we shoot arrows, that's also the reason why you only have to keep an eye on upgrading your left melee weapon and your beacon bow to the maximum level and keep that on that level. You should upgrade your left weapon and your beacon bow at every 5 to 10 levels and your armor only needs to be upgraded around every 20 levels. So that means when you made the level 22 build before that build here, then you just have to upgrade your armor once you hit level 51 or level 55, you can play with your level 20 armor the whole time until you reach level 55. And don't be afraid to not upgrade your armor items, because your armor values on all those armor items don't really matter at all in this game. Please be aware that when you claim items from the shop like the main line set or the big combo, they will be exactly at your level when you claim them. So if you buy all those items at level 1, they will all be level 1. So instead you should get those items from the shop at level 22 for the level 22 build or at level 55 for the level 55 build. Then you don't have to upgrade them at all. On our left melee weapon we will use a perfect warrior sword here, for example Hater Sabre with warrior damage, 50% crit damage and in this level at level 55 you should have 18% damage with swords. Those engravings of course scale with your level, so when you upgrade Hadros Harper to level 61 you will get another dot, if you upgrade it to level 71 then you will get the next dot and so on. On this sword I would suggest you engrave the 10% additional crit chance but minus 50% crit damage. You will reduce your damage slightly but you don't have to spend so much money to upgrade all your crit engravings when you use that engraving. You can get Hater's Harper when you do the A Friend in Need quest in Attica, just lie to Hater to keep the sword and then you will have the perfect epic warrior sword Hater's Harper. For the second sword you should use the Sword of Axon, it has warrior damage, also damage with swords which is the most important engraving for swords and then 24% fire damage. Of course those engravings will also scale up when you upgrade that sword to level 61, 71, 81 and so on. That's the reason why you should upgrade your offhand weapon, your second weapon also only every 10 levels 
because that's the level when all those engravings get an upgrade. I would recommend you engrave the 100% damage but health cap to 25% that will give you the biggest damage boost to deal the most damage and you still don't die from a single attack. It always takes you two attacks until you die. You have to keep that in mind. Even at full health you will most likely die from two hits anyway so there's no problem in using the reduced health engraving. And even if you have a reduced health all the full health stuff, the like full health crit damage, full health crit chance will still be working, definitely, because the game just uses it as your new full health. Of course, as a replacement, you could also use a 30% all damage or simply swap the engravings from Hater Sarper, put the 10% crit chance on the Sword of Axon, and then engrave permanent fire damage on the Hater Sarper. That way, you will deal permanent 60% fire damage with the Hater Sarper additionally. To get the Sword of Axon you only have to go to the Parthenon in Athens, in the treasury chamber there's an epic chest that will always contain the Sword of Axon with exactly these stats. But there's still another option instead of the Sword of Axon which is the Copycat Sword. The Copycat Sword has an additional 6% crit chance and with the Copycat Sword you can get well over 100% crit chance very very easily here. When you equip that you will get 102% so you can even reduce the amount of engraving purchases it if Feistos, you only need 100% of course. But when you use the copycat sword you will also lose a lot of your damage. You will only be at 32,000 damage and that's the reason I rather recommend you to go with the sword of Axon. Then you will not have 100%, you will have 96% crit chance but that's still enough to get critical hits almost every time. If you want to play with the copycat sword then you have to do the really bad day questline in Locris which is a Lost Tales of Greece and at the end of that questline you will be rewarded with the copycat sword. Then of course we use the Bighorn Bull with Hunter Damage, Adrenaline and Headshot Kill and here we engrave 8% crit chance. That means that you have to upgrade the normal crit chance at Hephaestus Workshop up to 8%. So the first upgrade will cost you 30,000, then 60,000 and then another 100,000. The Bighorn Bow is a bugged item that increases your warrior damage by 60%, so 15,000 warrior damage is only coming from using that bow. Make sure that you always use the left melee weapon because it amplifies only your left melee weapon. In order to get the big horn bow you have to go to the helix store and use your 200 free helix credits to get the bow. You don't even have to spend your money on it when you have still your 200 free helix credits you can just go and get it for free. For the armor items again we use the complete Nemean lion set because it is simply the most effective set in terms of warrior damage, critical damage and crit chance. On the headgear I engraved 12% crit chance while full health that also means that you have to upgrade your crit chance at full health at least one times so that will bring your total upgrade cost at Hephaestus at around 200,000 drachme in total. Then on the bracers we have warrior damage, 60% crit damage at full health and then we engrave 8% crit chance. The reason why you should upgrade the normal crit chance more than the crit chance at full health is because the crit chance will be used 3 times in total and the crit chance at full health will be used only 1 times. Because here on the belt we also use again another 8% crit chance. That's why I upgraded it 3 times instead of only 1 times for the crit chance at full health. Then on the torso we simply engrave 25% crit damage. There is no upgrade cost involved in that. You will have the 25% anyway when you reach level 50. And on the boots we engrave 60% crit damage at full health. Regarding the 60% crit damage at full health I just upgraded it once at Hephaestus because it was simply cheap to get for 30,000. But you don't have to do that. You can also stick around with your 50% crit damage at full health. So in order to use all those engravings you first have to solve the following 10 ostracars here. That will upgrade your crit chance and your crit damage at full health. Hunt Dog, Odo in the Court, Stadium Love, Procrastinate Now and To the Edge of the World will upgrade your crit chance at full health and then the other 5 Starcrossed Lovers, Bottomless Lake, Rightful King, Stone Cold and Prophecy Prevention will upgrade your crit damage at full health to the necessary 10% or 50%. Since it would be too long to show you all the solutions for these 10 ostracars, I will simply link you a guide in the description of this video and you can simply check out the guide and solve these ostracars with the help of that guide. And then when you solved all those Ostra cards you have to go to a 5 stars workshop in Marlis. And then you can upgrade additionally your crit chance and crit damage at full health. And I propose you to do it in the following way. Upgrade 3 times your normal crit chance, upgrade 1 times your crit chance at full health. Of course if you have more than 200,000 you can spend even more money on upgrading more of these engravings. That will definitely help you and you will have to do it anyway. 
When you upgraded everything accordingly, you should get the following stats of 257% Vora damage, 60% damage swords, then 96% or even over 100% crit chance if you use a copycat sword or if you upgraded your engravings further than suggested. 365% crit damage at least, then 64% additional fire damage, which you can activate with your hater sniper every time you want to by using that ability or just with a permanent engraving. There's not much resistance or health here, but that shouldn't matter anyway because you will deal so much damage that nothing will really hit you anymore. Since this build only uses 79 ability points, it is more than ever needed to spend them in the best possible way. And of course, in order to have 79 ability points at level 55 or 56, you also have to loot all those 22 tombs in the main game, then you have those additional 22 points. But that's something you will have done at that level anyway. First of all, there are a lot of passive abilities that give you a lot of free damage. So make sure you get all those passive damage boosts as listed here before you select your active abilities or you spend your mastery points. In the Hunter Tree, no matter which playstyle you actually use, go for 6 cents because it slows down time but also helps you for your assassinations and your warrior ability kills. Then Arrow Master will enable you to shoot fire arrows dealing more damage and using the fire damage additionally to it. I strongly recommend to get at least one powerful arrow shot here with the devastating shot being probably the best of them. 400% damage when fully charged, definitely the easiest one to use and Archery Master gives you 40% additional headshot damage and also refills your first adrenaline segment, so very important. I actually didn't get the charged heavy tech here because I had not enough ability points, but you should definitely go for Weapons Master for the crit chance for the warrior damage, Gear Master for the armor and then spend one point here on flaming attacks to unlock Fire Mastery to get the 40% additional fire damage. If you want to use fire damage more often then of course you can replace the Fox of Olympus with a permanent fire damage engraving but make sure that you place that on your left melee weapon on Hater's Harper when you want to use it. Or you simply put 3 points on the fire ability to activate it more often without a cooldown time. Then overpower attacks the strongest attack dealing 2.7 million damage. Furious of Bloodline even with 1 point only will give you 3 adrenaline bars and 1 million damage and will give you enough adrenaline to use an overpower attack right after it. So whenever you encounter a mercenary it is really powerful to first use Fury because it gives you all the adrenaline to then use an overpower attack after it. That will kill every mercenary even if the mercenary is like a couple of levels higher than you. For the crowd control you should then go for a ring of chaos and then also second wind as your health refill. Please be aware that many of these abilities are only really powerful when you reach spear level 5 when you can upgrade them to level 3. Especially ring of chaos and second wind are really weak if they are only level 1 or level 2. In the assassin tree you should go for shadow assassin that gives you 40% additional assassin damage and also 50% critical damage and that 50% crit damage will also work for warrior and hunter of course. Since rush assassination is not always enough to kill a mercenary in a single strike here in that build, you can also go for critical assassination of course if you want to, but I definitely prefer rush assassination. Critical assassination however will deal more damage and kill them safely. But don't forget to get the stealth master that will give you 10% additional damage overnight. Of course if you don't want to play overnight you can also invest those 3 points here simply on critical assassination then you will be definitely fine. In the masteries you should spend 12 points on crit chance so you will get 4% crit chance. You can actually save 8 more points to get another 1% so only use 12 points to get the first 4% and then save the other 8 points until you have really enough points to do that. In the warrior tab there is really nothing where we spend our points on. Of course if you have more points then you could go there and spend some. But here that is important, 12 points on damage swords that will give you an additional 24% damage swords, the biggest damage driver for sword builds and then of course another 15 points on crit chance at full health that will give you another 9% crit chance totaling in 96% or even over 100% if you use the copycat sword. Then of course the next best would be to increase your crit damage while full health, the damage while full health, of course maxing out the damage with swords or even in the hunter tab the normal crit damage. I hope you really like this build, that is a lot of explanation especially for new players but it makes totally sense when you also watch the level 22 build. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.